Here's how not to make a platformer on Scratch. So you've realized that platformers get lots of views, and you decide to make one. One way to do this is to go to any generic platformer and just remix it. Remember not to include any credits, because that's what this box is for, right? You can just share this, but if you're feeling especially creative, change the color of the main character or something like that. Remember, no credits necessary. But if for some reason you feel like making your own project, here's how not to do that too. First of all, movement is super important for platformers. So let's make it as sloppy as possible. Make it feel like the player is on ice and make the jump super floaty. And also be sure not to add any unique obstacles, only spikes and lava. Adding cool level design and unique mechanics may actually motivate the player to keep on playing to master current mechanics and even learn new ones. But we're trying to be bad here. Also, bonus points if you make a level impossibly hard by just adding a ton of spikes everywhere. Remember, difficulty equals fun, so you should strive to make your games as difficult as possible without adding any variety or interesting stuff. All games need a good balance between art and gameplay, so either go to one extreme or the other. Spend all of your time on art and have terrible gameplay, or have amazing gameplay but terrible art. Or even better, just don't spend time on your platformers at all. People love playing a half-finished game with no effort spent on it. The main character should match the level design and general theme of the game. Luckily for you, a one-eyed rounded square is the perfect match for every type of theme. Have a pixel art style? Make your main character a rounded square. It's a perfect match. And that wraps up how not to make a platform on Scratch. Wait, what? Um. Anyhow, if you're eager to learn about the secret to making a great platformer, check out this video. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.